A week ago to the day, Don't Starve Together's newest update, Waterlogged, washed up the shore, everyone. And what a busy week it's been. We've stayed on top of the content by covering darn near every inch of it. However, it all started with just a basic overview of all the nonsense that you see before you. And I'd kind of like to end our time with the beta with something very similar, yet entirely different. Opinions over fact about it. For you see, with only one hotfix to its name, a hotfix that mostly impacted our nautical circles over that of the ocean content, mind you, the waterlogged update has room for slight improvement, I think, and that's what I'm here to discuss with you all here now. Let's ask ourselves this, what needs to change, and what would we like to see change before the update's full release? And as for me, the answer is actually quite simple, and focuses mostly on one major mechanic, the above average trees. Now we'll get to that in a bit, cause for now I'd still like to revisit things I liked and didn't like, such how as I really enjoyed how world generations made it to where the waterlogged biome, a name that possibly still needs to change honestly, were easy to find, and also experience out there on the water of course. Listen, this content is ocean filler to a degree, if you know what I mean. But it's at least some interesting filler, and finding one of these biomes nowadays is gonna occupy our time in a way that actually matters. And that's what matters. Now I might still be warming up to the look and feel of the place, as I'm still kind of having a hard time thinking that this is actually Don't Starve Together we're seeing, but I do appreciate the dynamics of the biome. The almost constant activity of it all. Grass gators wandering about, sea striders dropping from above to eat fish, trees swaying and growing, and vines swinging. It's definitely unique, I'll give it that. But how about the rest of the contents? How does it stack up? Well, grass gators are pretty neat, I suppose, and perhaps we should actually mine their 50 damage hit at the end of the day. However, with their skittish nature that could easily drive them onto land and beyond, coupled with their very familiar kiting pattern when actually on land, I might be starting to feel bad for these beasts. I mean, with a loot table of seven leafy meat per gator, plus an insanely quick respawn timer of but two to two and a half minutes each, they are going to be dying left and right, I feel. But who am I kidding? That's great. Grass gators will be huge for leafy meat farms nowadays, so take advantage. They also have an hilarious respawn animation too, which I cannot get over. They have a shedding mechanic that produces twigs daily, which could be useful I suppose, and they're not horde like either, so do with that as you please. Now perhaps make them grass producers too with that shedding mechanic and maybe consider having them mate now and then, and we'll be good I think. I really do not believe in making grass gators tameable if I'm honest folks, and I hate the burst your bubble there. It just doesn't really make sense, cause what happens when they buck us off when we're in the middle of the frickin' ocean? But how about the sea striders beard? What can change with them you think? Well, once again I find myself not asking for much, as I kinda like them the way they are. They're nest mechanics and all. If anything, they should maybe collect stuff atop the water when actually loyal to us, but other than that, I like how they're not like any other spiders, in that they're only active when ocean fish are nearby, instead of simply being active come dusk. In a similar vein, I appreciated how their nests were also not so easily disturbed as all the rest of them out there, and that beyond attacking said nests of course, the ways to actually disturb them were tied to the biome's mossy vines here, or even the act of ramming great tree trunks. One being more convenient than the other, of course. I was also a pretty big fan of having said great tree trunks be the cornerstone of both sea strider respawns and grass gators, and with sea strider cocoons regenerating in random spots each time, it really did add to the dynamics of the biome that I alluded to earlier. I liked how Weber was able to immediately benefit from a relationship with these Jesus spiders, and with his webby whistle now working on them, said relationship is even better I suppose. However, I like many others were perhaps taken a little back by just how little said relationship actually mattered at sea, I think. Now they're absolutely phenomenal against the Crab King, but absolutely awful against anything else. So again, if you make him collect things for us on the water, then they're gonna be unique compared to everything else, and then I think we'll be getting somewhere. Contrary to all that though, how about something that might already be where it needs to be? Like figs for example. 
Now I've seen folk asking for a little more. But I was pretty satisfied with four new recipes, some new mechanics to go along with all of it, and it all just being optional anyways. But with fixing all that being optional, they actually still deliver, as being tied to the disturbing sea strider nets was an interesting touch as I mentioned prior. The fact that each find only takes two and a half to three days to respawn is definitely worth noting, especially as they continue to do so in winter mind you. Being able to use figs as bait might not seem all that great, but as we've discovered, they seem pretty effective, so there's that. And finally, the four crockpot dishes can certainly hold their own among the millions we already have for sure, so that's gotta mean something. Maybe not the likes of figgy frogwitches and fig stuffed trunks, mind you, although the recipes themselves are kinda fun, but both fig kebab and figatoni absolutely take the cake with their own easy recipes and stellar stat regens. Not bad, not bad at all. I would, however, like to see a better chance of spawning mossy vines from ramming tree trunks at the end of the day, as I've only ever seen it once before. But other than that, pick it up to your heart's desire. But hold up, beard. You missed talking about tree jam and all that. It's a fig recipe, too. So what gives? Ah, I was just waiting for our last segment here, as it's a segment not on tree jam itself, mind you, but rather on knobbly trees, great tree trunks, and of course player grown above average trees, and how it all fits together. That said, knobbly trees simply lead to one of those things, and are otherwise just wood on the water. So let's just focus on ramming tree trunks and what it means, yes? As we've learned, it could mean a lot of things, and perhaps it's a bit unconventional for the time being, but it's what Clay came up with and what we have to deal with. But it leads specifically to these, Ocean Nut Underwater Salvageables. Get over to one once it falls into the ocean, or just get lucky and have one fall onto your boat, and either way, a knobbly tree nut will be yours, with help of a pinching winch. Find anywhere where there's water, load it back onto said pinching winch, drop the thing back into the water, and the growth process will begin. Over the course of two days, of course. Do note that you could just leave it in the water initially, too. Whatever the case, now comes enrichment in the form of multiple uses of tree jam over the course of yet an additional 12 to 15 days, and only then can an above average tree be yours. And what do we actually get after all that? Well, not much, unfortunately. Wetness protection, lightning protection, shade from the summer heat, and smoldering protection. Now, that sounds great, and it arguably is, but when these trees take forever to achieve, and all that they do is all that, plus drop six logs if chopped, we have a problem, I think. Where are the fig vines? Where are the grass gator spawns? Heck, where are the sea striders even? Yeah, if anything needs to change before full release, it's these trees for sure. Other than that though, jam being used to force the growth of other trees is interesting I suppose. It's a pretty good fertilizer at the end of the day, so there's that. And Wormwood players have yet another healing item to add to their arsenal, and it's one that's gonna bloom them too. So take advantage. But two last quote unquote what the heck is the point notes here folks. Why on earth can we jam up great tree roots to no avail it seems? And perhaps the change to the food values of Swedish fish is also in order, because for now, they're pretty non noteworthy. Why do you think we haven't talked about them since day one of the updates? But here's something that might surprise you, and no, I don't mean just inserting myself literally at the end of the video here, I mean that we haven't even talked about the best part of this update. The boat rework. And before your head explodes, yes, you heard that right. Even after everything we just talked about, all the review of the content that we just did with adding a few little personal opinions here and there, the best part of this update is the fact that boats are faster now, they're more maneuverable, masks are better, oars are better, they're less flimsy, all of that. Yes, the boat rework was the best part of the waterlogged updates. But folks, that will be doing it for us here today. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. There's only been one hot fix. Maybe something else is going to drop. Maybe we won't see anything until the full release. I'm not sure. But surprisingly, as I do still consider this filler content, it was good filler content. And there's really only one component of it that absolutely needs changing. And that's the above average trees. If they don't touch anything else but that, I would honestly call this a pretty darn solid update. And that coming from my mouth. The hater of all things ocean content pretty much. <laughs>
Yeah, that should mean a lot. But, again, let me know your thoughts and opinions below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.